This is Dave, he's really cool. Um, when, when you talk about podcasting, podcasting has been around now for a decade. Uh, there, there are people who've been podcasting from the onset. This is one of those guys. <laughs> Um, school of podcasting, and he has a lot of fun and insightful things. I mean, from somebody who's been there, somebody who's been literally through the through the progression of everything, we couldn't think of a better way. And the best part is, he's a Pittsburgher. He's here. We didn't bring him in from other city from some other city. He's here, and he does a lot of stuff within the Pittsburgh area. So with that, I'm going to quickly turn it over to to Dave, and he's gonna he's gonna give you some fun information. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Pittsburgh. Come on, seriously, there we go. I'm like, come on, 11 years, come on, we've made it through this far. We gotta have some energy going. Yeah, my name is uh, Dave Jackson, and today we're gonna talk about, I, I thought of an opening keynote. I'm like, okay, what can we do to get you guys pumped up? First of all, how many people here have a podcast? Cool, oh, that's awesome. How many people don't have a podcast yet? That is awesome, perfect. I, I'm, I'm to, to quote the immortal Pat Flynn, I'm stoked to see that now. So this is awesome. All right, well, let's uh, get on to the boring slide. A little bit about me. Uh, I have been podcasting since 2005, which is back in the day. I uh, started a website called The School of Podcasting, which now has over 1.3 million downloads, which still kind of blows my mind. Uh, and I've written a couple books. One's called More Podcast Money. And then I have two that are basically called My Favorite Podcast Is, where I basically interview people and say, why do you listen to that podcast? And the idea there is to figure out what makes people tune into a podcast, and then I share that with you guys. So what we're going to talk about today is the effects of podcasting. Because there are, it just like, you know, if you eat a lot of donuts, the side effect is, well, you know, it's not the most healthiest food in the world. Well, there are effects of podcasting, whether you want them or not. So the first thing is, you're going to find like-minded people. And I have a client of mine that's starting a podcast about basically superheroes, and comic books and that kind of stuff. And I said, okay, great. I said, uh, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I know. There's already a billion of those out there. And, and I'm like, okay, well, why are you starting this podcast? And he said, oh, it's easy. My family is really tired of talking about comic books and superheroes, and I need to find people who want to talk about superheroes and comic books. And I'm like, you are in the right place. Because when you start putting out your content, you will attract like-minded people. And so, uh, I don't want to talk politics, but of course, Donald Trump wants to build a wall. Well, I bet my own. This is my office. And what I basically have asked my audience to do is wherever you're at, take a picture and send it to me. And it's funny because apparently a lot of my audience is dudes with beards and carbs. Uh, but the beautiful thing about this is all these people, I've never met a listener of my show that I didn't like because they're kind of like me. They don't take themselves too seriously, but they take their podcast very seriously. And so you will attract like-minded people, like people, and it's just very cool that uh, some of my best friends are basically people that I've never met because they're in another state or in some cases another country. And another side effect of podcasting, it will open doors. And what I mean by this is I have a, a, a person that was in a mastermind with me, his name's Alan Lee, he does the School of Banking. And I asked him, I'm like, how are your download numbers? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, okay, what about your website? He goes, I don't know. And I'm like, well, okay, how do you gauge your podcast success? And he goes, oh, that's easy. He goes, I get to talk to people who never, ever would give me the time of day before. And now all I have to say is, would you like to come on my podcast? And they're returning my phone call. So for him, that's how he gauges success. And I grew up kind of in the, the late 80s. And so I got to interview a bunch of people that you've probably never heard of, like the, the bass player from Quiet Riot and the drummer for Rod Stewart and Ozzy Osbourne and all this other stuff. And at the time when I was doing that show, that was like awesome. Those are like my heroes. And again, these people would never give me the time of day. If I saw them in an airport and said, hey, can we sit down for 20 minutes and talk about the music business? They'd be like, uh, no. But because I had a podcast, they would. So it will open doors for you. Relationships. I kind of mentioned this. Some of my best friends are people I've never met face to face. Because you will basically, it's, I have a, a, a listener of mine said, hey, do you realize I talk to you more than I do my friends? Because he'll listen to my show, he'll send me an email or a voicemail, I'll reply to the voicemail, he'll then reply to the reply, and we're basically having a, it's a time shifted conversation. And he said, I have friends that, you know, I've grown up from high school, he goes, I don't talk to them this much. But he talks to me on a weekly basis. So you will establish relationships, and this right here, is probably one of the most priceless things you will get from your podcast, relationships. 
And you'll see here in a minute, that's what you really can capitalize on. You will get loyal listeners. It's kind of, uh, I've had things, I had a, a he, the guy goes by a, a, a pseudonym. He calls himself Stargate Pioneer. He sent me this really nice wooden rack to put all my gear in. Why? Because he wanted to. Just, it's weird how, and it's, it, to me, that's kind of, it blows my mind, but you will get extremely loyal listeners. So I got a couple examples of you. Uh, Keith and the Girl are another podcast that have been doing it for years, back in 2005. They're out of New York City. And it's kind of a, a Howard Stern morning show kind of thing. Very, very funny. They do it five days a week. They have really, really loyal listeners. And uh, they started tattooing themselves. So here's the Keith and the Girl logo. Here's the Keith and the Girl tattoo. And their fans are so crazy about their show, they said, oh, well, that's not good enough. It's fine. You got a tattoo. And their fans started, yes, I'm not making this up, branding as in <laughs> their logo on their body. And I'm like, you know, I, there are things that I really, really like. I am not branding anything on, I mean, I just think of the pain and all that involved. But that is a serious, loyal listener. Here's another great example, um, except I'm hitting the wrong button. And there we go. Scott Sigler, seen here podcasting from his closet. Hall of Fame podcaster. And what Scott did is he's an author, and he has kind of a unique genre where he writes science fiction and horror and blends them together. And all these publishers said, nobody's going to read that. And Scott said, oh, I, I think different. So he started putting his book, which is called Earth Core, out in little snippets. Now what this did is, again, it connected, his audience found it, and they're like, wow, science fiction and horror, this is awesome. And so they started you know, listening to each episode and they were just uh, addicted to it. And so as it's coming out, they're also emailing Scott going, this is really cool. Is so-and-so going to do this in the book? And Scott might have been going, you know, that way. he wasn't, but he might now. So he's getting feedback on his product as it's coming out. And so the book was given out completely, 100% via audiobook, right, via podcast. So his fans had the book for free, not it, didn't pay a dime. Eventually... Scott turned around and put that book out as a printed book on Amazon, and had it not been for this little book called Harry Potter, it would have been the number one book of all of Amazon. Not number one in his category, number one in all of Amazon, except for this little thing called Harry Potter. That's amazing. So think about this. These people don't need this book. They've already got it in audio format, read by the author, but it's this thing called the law of reciprocity, meaning, hey, you've done something really nice for me. I want to do something really nice for you. So when he said, hey, if you don't mind, it's available now at Amazon, they're like, oh, this is, I can't believe you've, you've entertained me for weeks. I can definitely spend whatever, eight, nine bucks for a book. And it just rocketed right up the charts. Loyal listeners. This is another one that's amazing when you listen to it. Uh, does anybody here remember Adam Curry from MTV? All right. Do you guys know that he also was one of the guys that started podcasting? And he does a show with a guy named John C. Dvorak. It's called The No Agenda Show. And if you listen to it in the middle of it, they, all they do is they say, look, we have a value for value model. If you find value in our show, please give us something that we value called um, money. And they have a thing where if you donate $1,000, I want to pause here a second. I don't know about you, but in my book, $1,000 is a chunk of change. And they have people donating $1,000 every single episode. And you become a knight of the No Agenda Roundtable. And they do this whole thing, and they play this music. Welcome to the da, da, da. you are now a you know. And they actually send them out a ring. You get a ring that you get to wear to prove that you're a knight. But they have people donating a thousand dollars, five dollars, fifty dollars. And the whole middle of it is just them thanking their audience. And what they do is they go through and dissect the media. So all the stuff that the news should be covering, but they're too busy talking about the fact that Beyonce sneezed. They're actually talking about on their show. And then, likewise, this is Congressional Dish from Jennifer uh, Briney. She does this show, God bless Jen, man. She actually goes in and reads the bills that Congress is like, getting ready to pass or decline. I love this show, but I can only listen to it at certain times because by the end of it, I want to punch something. And it's amazing. And here's another person that she didn't want sponsors, and neither does the No Agenda show, because then you kind of have to be careful on what you say on the podcast. And both of these are like, we need to say what's going on. And so it's amazing when you listen to these and then you watch an actual like NBC, ABC, Fox News, the fact that they're not covering this information and it's going on behind our backs. It's amazing. And so 
their loyal listeners, they make a living from their podcast simply through donations. You're going to be seen as an expert whether you want to or not. I do a show about weight loss, which was supposed to be me kind of documenting my weight loss, which it did, and then it documented my weight gain, and then it documented my weight loss, and then my weight gain. So it was up and down. But it was amazing because I start off every episode saying, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, I'm just a dude like you in the basement trying to lose weight. And I get these insanely <laughs> detailed questions, and they're using all this medical jargon and my gluten rate, and, and I'm like, look, I'm just a dude in the basement trying. So you'll be seen as an expert. And when you're seen as an expert, well, guess what? Here's another cool thing about being seen as an expert. You get to go talk at places like this because they're like, well, you're, you're the person that has the podcast. For every one podcast, there are 2,000 blogs. And so if you want to stand out, it's actually easier to stand out with a podcast, not to mention the fact that now you have things like tone of voice that you just don't have when you're doing a blog. So you'll be seen as an expert. And in some cases, you will actually get employment. So. They always say talk about what you know. So in my 10 years, uh, actually 11 at this point, years of podcasting, um, I graduated with I, my teaching degree and I went to a place called Chancellor University. And I was trying to get a job as an instructor and they're like, great, blah, 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 here's my stuff, going through the resume. And I said, oh, by the way, I also do this thing called podcasting. They went, podcasting? You, do, you know how to do a podcast? And I'm like, oh yeah, I run the school of podcasting. Really? Because we think it'd be good to do a, a podcast for our students on how to get the most out of Chancellor University. I got the job. And I'm positive that a big chunk of that is because I could say I could do a podcast. Uh, another great story that still kind of blows me away, because I, I didn't make this up. I was, um, there used to be a conference called the New Media Expo, and at the time it was one of the largest events for new media and podcasting and blogging and things like that. And I got hired to be their director of podcasting. And the beauty of this, remember relationships? They went to the head of Libsyn and said, hey, we need a director of podcasting. Who do you think would be good? And Rob said, what do you think about Dave Jackson? Then he went to the head of Blueberry and said, we need a director of podcasting. You know what they said? What about Dave Jackson? Then he went to the Spreaker, which is another media hosting company. And that guy said, what do you think about Dave Jackson? I couldn't plan that. But through my podcast and building relationships with those companies, uh, I got the gig. Then, and the beauty of that, uh, the, the fun part about being in, in training is anytime sales doesn't hit their quota, the first thing it gets whacked, because you don't want to work smarter now by any means, is they whack the training department. So about every five to ten years, I would find myself in the human resources office with them going, I can't believe we have to do this. You are such a great trainer, but we got to let you go. One company I won, employee of the year, six months later I was let go. I was like, great. So when I found myself between jobs, as they say, I used that relationship and I called up Lipson and said, hey, the bad news is uh, I don't have a job anymore. The good news is I get to come work for you if you want me. And if we had stripper music, <laughs> I now work for Lipson. Yay. That's the cool thing. And I'm loving every minute of that, by the way. Um, another side effect of podcasting is increased sales. There are a couple of shows that, uh, like one, it's run by a knitting like company, and they sit on their front porch and knit and turn on microphones and talk about knitting and stories and things like that. And those stories, when you share a little bit of yourself, it helps people connect with you. And they say every time they mention some sort of product on their show, sales go up 20%. The other thing is because you have this time-shifted conversation with your audience, you get to know your audience so you know what they like which allows you to deliver better content, which gets them more rabid so they're telling their friends about it. I mean, if you think about it, House of Cards on Netflix, most of us have seen that. The reason that show is so good is because Netflix saw that we like to see Kevin Spacey in kind of the villain role, and uh, we really like the West Wing. Hmm, what if we put those two things together? So Netflix knows what their audience wants, and they just keep giving it to them. So you will increase your sales if that's what you're looking for, if you want to start a podcast for your business. You'll also build a global community. As much as we kind of think of podcasting being like radio, it's like a little internet radio show. Well, it is and it isn't, because you're gonna reach a global community. And so, uh, when I started podcasting back in 2005, I lived in the lovely metropolis of Mogador, Ohio, which uh, you'll see here in a second, isn't even on the map. And so, what is in Mogador, Ohio, is basically Duma meats uh, and uh, corn. So I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I'm in the basement, next to the water heater starting a podcast. And again, I'm in the lovely metropolis 
of Mogador, Ohio. So you can see, here's Cuyahoga Falls, where I live now. There's Akron, Kent. Here's my, there's no, there's no, no, no Mogador on the map. It's that small. And the first piece of feedback I get is from this guy, Michael Van Lahr. I never will forget this. Why did I not forget this? Because Michael Van Lahr is from Nuremberg, Germany. So I'm out in the cows, in the corn, and I'm sitting there and I get this email with a little attachment to it, and I click on it and I hear, hello Dave, this is Michael Van Lahr from Nuremberg, and I literally, I'm not, I let a bit, fell out of my chair. I just, could, I just kept playing it. I'm like, did he say Germany? Did he, he really said Germany. Wait, and I'm like, wait, I'm here, he's, wow. And that's when I was completely addicted to podcasting. Now the other fun thing is, you can actually instigate change. So if you're like a nonprofit and you want to go out and tell the world and you cannot get the news to quit talking about the Kardashians, even though you have something really important to talk about, get a podcast. This is Corey Finneran. He does a show about the Chicago Cubs. It's called Ivy Envy. And the Chicago Cubs were giving away some tickets. And Corey's like, oh, cool. And then he found out that there's this weird rule that if you live like not super close to the stadium, you're not eligible for the tickets. And Corey was talking about this on his podcast. He goes, that's really stupid because A, there are people that you know, grew up in Chicago and moved away and they might come back for a weekend to watch a game. And B, there are a lot of people that live a little further from the stadium that would love free tickets. Well, guess who was listening to his show? The Chicago Cubs. And so they actually called Corey, who at the time was kind of freaking out because he thought maybe they were gonna smack him for talking about the Cubs because sports teams get a little weird about their logos and things like that. And they said, no, we just want to let you know we kind of agree with you. It's not really our rule. It's Major League Baseball's rule. And what we've done is we've got our lawyers together and we're going to Major League Baseball. Long story short, they changed the rule because Corey talked about it on his podcast. Um, I have a, a, a blog post on my website that says the 12 reasons you should never use uh, blog talk radio. It gets a lot of hits on my website. And so I'm at a, an event and this guy walks up. And he says, hey, Dave, I'm Andy Toe. And I'm like, Andy, great to meet you. Uh, tell me about your show. And he goes, oh, actually, I'm from Blog Talk Radio. And I'm like, what part of my body should I cover first? And uh, he said, I want to let you know I, I, I want to thank you for that post. And I was like, okay. Why? And he goes, we're going to actually try to change every one of those things you mentioned because you're right. That We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do this. They're still working on the list at this point. But it was amazing that here again, Something I had mentioned on the internet that grabbed somebody's attention who I had no idea was listening to me, and they said, yeah, that's, you made a good point. We're going to try to change that. So if you want to instigate change, podcasting is a great side effect. Money. Now, notice I mentioned this one last. Is, this is your sole 100% reason to get into podcasting, and you want to do it fast. Please just light your money on fire because it just doesn't work that way. Because here's the thing, you say, yeah, I'm gonna sell this to my audience, and my audience is gonna do this, and then my, well, when you first start, you better have a lot of passion about what you're talking about, because when you first start, you don't have an audience. And if your whole podcast is about selling to them, that's not the most entertaining thing. You, you need your podcast to make people laugh, cry, think, groan. You should educate them or entertain them, something like that. So when I hear somebody uh, I tuned into the actual radio on Friday to hear the host argue with somebody who called in about, I forget what it was, but it was just like, it didn't make me laugh, cry, think, groan. It was just horrible. So you need something to get an audience. Then you build that relationship with your audience. And then, depending on what you're doing, you can leverage that for the almighty dollar. But it doesn't happen super easy. And the one thing you have to deliver is value. You have to, you can't just talk into a microphone and wait for the, you know, make it rain kind of thing. It just doesn't work. You have to deliver value. And here's why. In a world of AM, FM, CDs, Sirius Satellite Radio, uh, Hulu, Netflix, uh, you name it, right? There are all sorts of choices. And if you stink, I can easily find something else that will entertain me. And we've only got 24 hours. So if you don't deliver value, it's way too easy to tune out of you. There is no spam in podcasting. People listen to you because they want to listen to you, because you deliver value. So let's do a little podcast math. How do I grow my audience? Well, it's, this is it. The value in your episode multiplied by smart promotion. Now, what is smart promotion? That is knowing where your audience is 
going there, building a relationship with them, and then telling them about your podcast. So if I do a, a knitting podcast, going to the Slayer concert, probably not my target audience, right? Heavy metal knitters, probably not the same kind of people. Smart promotion, knowing what your audience wants, knowing where they are so you can go tell them about your show. Now, realize that then equals the total number of downloads. So if there's no value in it, and I just promote the heck out of this, well, that's not gonna go anywhere. Zero times a thousand is still zero. If I have a ton of value in it, but I don't tell anybody about it, because if, I, if they build it, they will come. No, they won't. You have to tell them it's here. So you have to have both of these to get downloads. The other thing I always like to mention, I'm a fan of a guy named John Lee Dumas. You will probably hear about him. He makes millions, millions of dollars a year. And John does a daily show that every day he delivers value. So a lot of people think that's the recipe. If I just do a daily show, it's a daily show that delivers value. But realize uh, when I had him on my show, it took him six months to get his first sponsor. That's six months of a daily show, okay? John, that's 180 episodes. If you're doing a weekly show, that means you'll get your first sponsor somewhere around three and a half years. <laughs> Just saying, it's math. And also, John doesn't have a job and he has no children. So he is kind of, this is the game of golf, he's hitting on a different set of tees than some of us who have kids and jobs and children and things of that nature. So what do you need to focus on to, to, to get this going? Number one, you need to get to know your audience. You just, that's it, that's key. Focus on your audience because these are the people you are serving. You have to know what they want. Because if you hand me chocolate covered fish sticks, I'm not a fan. But if you find out that I love pizza, I will you know, follow you to the end of the world. You've got to give your audience what they want. Not, not, not new and noteworthy. So many people, now back, back in the day, like 2006, new and noteworthy, you could get a pretty decent bump in iTunes. It's this area of iTunes. That's not the case anymore because there are thousands of podcasts coming out a week. This is not what you focus on. Also, if you pull up your Lipson stats and you look at them and scream, grow, <laughs> grow, it doesn't make them. So when you spend hours chugging through your stat, it, no, focus on your audience in the same way that if you focus on what you eat and getting exercise, the result is weight loss. If you focus on your audience and what they want, then the downloads will come. You don't have to focus on them. So that's the key. And then the other thing is when you're new, and I always hate to hear this phrase, I only have 80 downloads an episode. Only 80. Well, again, my background's in training. We used to have 20 people in a class. That was a big class. And so when I hear 80, I think immediately in my head, that's four classrooms. If it's you know, 200, that's, wow, that's 10 classrooms. And that would be basically a floor of my old building that are choosing to listen to you. Not because they have to, because they want to. And so now when you say I only have 80 people, you can basically answer every email. You can answer every tweet. You can reply to every comment. Why? Because quote, the big shows can't. They're too big, they can't. You know, I'm getting thousands, you know, 25,000 downloads an episode. You're not gonna be able to respond to all those people that are contacting you. Now a lot of times people Anytime you start something new, it might work and it might not. So I was just listening to uh, some of the uh, presentations from Podcast Movement. And this quote came out, the failure isn't trying and finding out everyone hated your podcast. That's not the failure. A lot of people do. Because if you think about it, if you learned that, wow, they really hated this, you know not to do it anymore, right? The true failure is just not putting it out. And that came from Kevin Smith. It was the guy behind Mall Rats and all those movies and things like that. And I want to point out something here. I mentioned that my show, The School of Podcasting, I looked it up. I've had four number one ratings, right? One star reviews. And here's something to think about this. In a world of, of remote controls where we don't like to get off the couch, I motivated somebody to get off the couch, go to their computer, find me at iTunes, and then write a one star review. I motivated that person. I moved them. And so when you think about it, if you take the four one-star reviews, and when I did this on Thursday, divide that by 1,321,338 downloads, it's not 3%, it's 
It's, it's this much. It's a little bit. And you know what? When I drive to work and somebody, you know, maybe I accidentally cut somebody off. Not that that ever happens. And they wave at me in a particular kind of way. The next day I still go out and drive. I don't stop because one person doesn't like the way I drive. I'm like, all right, that guy's not a fan of the way I drive. But I've got a bunch of people that I drove with and they were fine with it. So don't let fear of failure, uh, because much like babies, anybody here got kids? No kids? Okay, awesome. Kids are a lot of work, right? And there are times when it's like, oh my gosh, they just melt your heart. And there are other times when you just want to like, I don't know, kill them. And, um, but in the end, they're worth it, right? So a podcast can be a lot of work, but in the end, it's definitely worth it because you will meet like-minded people. You will have doors open and you'll get to talk to people. And, oh my God, I can't believe I'm talking to so-and-so. I'll give you an example of this open door. Uh, I just had him on my show, a guy named Troy Heinrichs. Started off by sending a tweet to one of the actors on one of his favorite TV shows. And that led to him getting to know one of the writers, who then introduced him to the creator of the show, who then, uh, when he was in uh, Florida, got to go out and get a private tour of like the studio and hang out with the creator of the show for an hour. Oh, but wait, there's more. Just last week, he got flown to LA because NBC handles, he does a show about the blacklist exposed. And NBC handles all of the promotion for that in the States, but Sony Pictures handles it for, oh, I don't know, the rest of the world. They flew Troy in to host a TV show with, again, the creator of the show and interview him that's going to be shown on TV throughout the rest of the world because of his podcast, because he sent a tweet. And so it will open up doors. It's, it's amazing. I've got tons of stories like that. You're going to build relationships with people. Again, some of my best friends are scattered all over the world. You're going to have loyal listeners. You're going to build that community. The people that you thought, they, they hear your show. And they go, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one that felt that way. I thought I was the only one that liked this. Uh, and they find you and they're like, and they will download. I hear this over and over and over. Dave, I found your show. I downloaded the entire back catalog. This is awesome. I've been looking for this. So when they find your show, they just, they binge on your entire show. Um, you're going to be seen as an expert whether you want to be or not. Um, in some cases, you will get employment. I know a lot of people that uh, join the School of Podcasting go out and get jobs as audio editors because some people like to just record their stuff and have, let other people do the technical end. Um, if you're a business, you can definitely increase sales. Why? Because you're getting to know your audience better. And then uh, again, you will reach a global audience. Uh, a great story of this, Michael Butler does a music show and everybody knows that uh, Michael loves the Wild Hearts. It's this band from Australia. And to make a long story short, the Wild Hearts ask Michael to play bass because Michael's a bass player on this 20th anniversary show in London. He goes, oh, that would be so awesome. That would be so awesome, except I can't afford it. I'm just this guy in San Francisco doing a podcast. His audience chipped in and flew him to London to play, and then they put him up in their houses. So he didn't have to spend a dime, and he got to live his dream playing in his favorite band of all time in London. It was awesome. So those are all, and those are just some. I, mean, I could sit here all day and talk about it because of my podcast stories. But, uh, and again, if you want to instigate change, you can do that. So. How are we doing? Okay, good. I wanted to leave a little bit of time. If you have any questions, oh, the other thing I definitely have to mention before I get off this stage. There's a, uh, a documentary called The Messengers that I'm kind of involved with. How, you guys ready for like the ultimate meta? I'm doing a podcast about a documentary about podcasting. And they're doing, uh, it's, it's a phenomenal, it's, like a, it's not a bunch of, of folks with like camcorders that they found in the attic. This is like a real, honest to goodness documentary. If you go to YouTube, uh, just search for the, the, the Messengers documentary trailer and you'll see the trailer. Um, if you feel like taking a lovely trip to Akron, Ohio, where I'm from, uh, they're gonna be in town next week on the 20th uh, from three to 4.30, we're meeting at a library. And it's kind of a, we do a little podcaster meet up there and they're going to be there, so if you want to maybe potentially get in the movie, they're going to be doing interviews there as well. Uh, but uh, definitely check that out, and uh, if you, uh, you just, you'll be amazed when you see it. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, that is it. Again, if you, uh, the website for that is The Messenger's Doc, because it's a documentary, themessengersdoc.com. And then you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dave Jackson on Facebook, uh, School of Podcasting, and my website is schoolofpodcasting.com. And uh, with that, that concludes. But if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer a few if you got them. If not, thank you much. Are you guys pumped up about podcasting now? Does that sound like something you want to get into? Awesome.
Jackson? Any questions on anything? So, yeah. For all the people that said, I'm thinking of starting a podcast, what has stopped you so far? Uh, the, uh, there's, first of all, the great question. The question is, what kind of equipment do I need? Give me a stack of Bibles. You do not need to spend $2,000 on equipment. So if somebody says, I've got this package, it's $1,600, bucks. Eh, no, because you're going to buy a bunch of stuff you don't need. The microphone I recommend is called the Audio-Technica. It's either ATR2100 or 2005. It's the same microphone, one's black and one's silver. Don't ask me why. Um, and that runs anywhere from 50 bucks. I think right now on Amazon it's 80. So if you look at those two, I think the 2005 is 60 and the 2100 is 80. Um, the thing that's great about them is they work with a mixer if you need a mixer, but they also plug directly into your computer. And without getting super geeky, a dynamic microphone kind of just picks up what's right in front of it. And you'll see these other ones, usually by a company called Blue, um, that are condens or, yeah, condenser microphones, and they pick up everything. That's the good news. But the bad news is condenser microphones are used a lot in radio stations where they're in a soundproof booth. And you will find that uh, when you hit record on your podcast, nine times out of ten, it triggers your neighbor to mow the lawn. I don't know why that is. Um, or your child will cry or something else. As soon as you hit record, you're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Um, and where a dynamic microphone will pick up a little less of that, a condenser, you'd be like. And there are, there's a, a Blue Yeti is not a bad microphone. You just got to get right up on that bad boy and be in a really quiet room. Because I know uh, Rob from Lipson uses one of those. So that you can get good results, but I typically recommend the, uh, the 2100. So great question. Who else has a question? And if not, let's go back to my other one. If you haven't started podcasting yet, what's been, what's been the holdup? Because the, the one thing, I'm going to go on that failure thing again. We think about, oh, I don't want to look stupid in front of all these people. Remember, when you first start, you're not, you don't have a whole lot of people. And instead of thinking about that huge group, think about that one person that you might help. Think about that one person that had a really bad day at work. And now they're laughing on the way home because you did this. Or they're going, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that. And you're saving them time and you're saving them money. Think about the people you're going to help with your podcast. So, yes, we're taking questions, so I'm done. If you would like to move on. Oh, oh, great, we have another question. Being you know what I mean? So like in your subject matter, how do you because my podcast is very specific mm -hmm. and so I have guests on. Okay. And I kinda ask them the same questions ish and I don't want the podcast to start being like them saying the same thing every time, like all having the same answer, so it kinda becomes redundant. So how do you find like staying in your subject but having you know, not not repeating the same thing? Right. What is your audience? Like for me, my audience wants to know how to, to grow their audience. They want to talk about gear. Um, they want to um, know how to be entertaining, things like that. So I look at what I'm bringing this guest on because you're going to help my audience grow their audience, make money, get out there. So whatever your guest is, because here's the other thing, um, it's not the size of the guest that brings the value, it's the value in the guest. I mean, I've had Pat Flynn, I've had John Lee Dumas on my show, but everybody talks about Glenn the Geek. And before, Glenn was known in the horse world. He runs an entire network, makes a living with his podcast, talking about horses. But Glenn does everything that all the, quote, gurus tell you. He, he does the opposite. He could care less about new and noteworthy. He's got 24 advertisers. They don't do CPM. Um, and everybody was freaking out because this guy brought huge amounts of value. So if you're banking on, if I could just get Chris Brogan on my show, if I could just get, you know, whoever, Seth Godin, that's not, you'll get a spike, don't get me wrong. But in the end, you've got to keep the people, too. And uh, just ask them what their story is. A lot of times, that's the big key. You know, it's just like, okay, so, and if you listen to John Lee Dumas, that's all he's doing. Where did you fail? What was your aha moment? Okay, and then here's your, your part where you did really good. And then talk about the tools you used to do it. And then we're off to the races. So it's, it's an arc. It's, oh, my gosh, are they going to make it? Oh, look at it. And then, oh, it, it, it's successful. And if you look at every movie, Star Wars, oh, my gosh, is Luke going to accept the, the role? Is he going to take the responsibility? Is he going to make it? Oh, my gosh, are they going to kill the Death Star? Oh, my gosh, they did. Sorry, spoiler alert. And then, uh, and then it's off. Every movie's like that. It's called the hero's journey. So, you know, ask them what their story is. So, thanks.